You're listening to English with Monty, the podcast about the English language. Talking about British slang, words and expressions you can use in the UK. Hello there and welcome to English with Monty. Moving on to episode number 36. I've got Gideon with me today. How are you, Gideon? I'm feeling good, in it, in it, mate. Was that your slang? Well, I know that the subject of today's podcast is slang, so I thought I'd do my introduction with a bit of slang, more or less London slang, though, isn't it? As a question tag for everything. Yeah, it's like, isn't it? Is that? What's... I think that's the difference with in it for isn't it is okay, but in it for everything, like your John, in it. Ah. It's not grammatically correct, but it's used quite a lot. It is, isn't it, in London? Kind of regretting using it now because uh, maybe that's <laughs> not good advice to use in it all the time. Yeah, maybe not, but you do hear it, don't you? We're doing slang today, aren't we? And how would you define slang? Slang, I think that belongs to words that belong to a particular social group or locality, perhaps, as well. So words which may not be understood outside of the geographical area where it's said slang is particular to a place, isn't it? Either British slang, American slang, Australian slang, London slang. As you say, it's expressions coming locally, isn't it? Would they be in the dictionary? Would these words be in the dictionary? That's the other question I wanted to know. I think most of them would. Yeah. Most of them would if they used enough by native speakers they would be okay yeah i think slang is very important in any language isn't it and i thought today would go through some common british slang for all of those people out there in britain and i guess we'll focus on a few maybe ones that are a bit more common to london with you being a londoner <laughs> yeah i've seen the list you've given me john but I think most of these yeah everyone in britain would understand them wouldn't they yeah, or even I, beyond, I some so. of them, even though they don't use them, they'd understand them elsewhere. That's very true, isn't it? A few exceptions. A lot of them become quite universal, don't they, I suppose? Yeah. Maybe their origins are from London or somewhere like that, but then mm. they get spread around the country, don't they? Maybe we'll start off with bloke and lad, simply because they have fairly similar meanings, don't they? Yeah. Is lad slang? Is it not slang? Oof. Maybe. Difficult to define. Is that used only in Britain, lad? Um, I would have said so. I mean, I don't think... Recall... If it's used universally, then it wouldn't be slang by definition. Right, sure. Bloke sure. sounds very British. Bloke does sound very British. Should we say what it actually means? So bloke basically means man, doesn't it? So does lad. It's the same idea. Lad more of a young man, though. It is really, isn't it? You'd probably say good lad, he's a good lad. He's a good he's... lad. Or he's a good bloke. Yeah, so sometimes interchangeable. It's saying that it's the equivalent would be dude in American English, is it? Bit. Maybe. Although you couldn't speak directly saying bloke. You'd say mate, wouldn't you? Hello, mate. What are you doing this afternoon? You couldn't say hello, bloke. No, that's true. You could say hello, dude. In British English, if you said dude, you'd do it kind of ironically, wouldn't you? To say dude. All right, dude. Dude. It would be for humorous effect. Yeah. Usually use dude. I guess some people would. I mean, I think in the surfing community, it's big, isn't it? So I think I'm not part apparently... of the surfing community. You're not. That's in, surprising. In my area of North London, there wasn't much <laughs> surfing going on, let me tell you. I guess not. Had you been a surfer, had you grown up in Brighton, no. then you could have used yeah. dude. But I surf yeah. the internet. Does that count? <laughs> yeah, it does. I'm a surfer. If you're chatting to people on chat rooms, you can just mm. call them dude on the internet. Chat rooms, do they still exist? Chat rooms. Dead oh. I'm showing my age then. Mm, I don't okay. know. Those are two interesting ones. As you said, lad is a bit more for boys or younger men. I think we have lots of words for this, but to get drunk, we have lots and lots of words in terms of slang, don't we? Not surprisingly. <laughs> yes. Not surprisingly. Uh, reflection of our culture, really, isn't it? This one, I suppose. The fact that we have so many that. words for getting very Just drunk. I'm sure there are dozens. I'm thinking at the top of my head, you say like hammered, wasted, yeah, trolled, trolled, plastered, yeah, plastered, 
shit faced. Should I be swearing? Shit faced. In it, shit faced. Leathered. Leathered. I didn't know that one. I don't <laughs> use that one. Yeah, yeah. Pissed. Yeah. That gives people a few options when they come to the UK and they fall about the street. Beautiful. And you get stopped by a policeman and say, What's wrong with you, mate? And then you can answer them with one of the appropriate adjectives. Yeah, that's true. I'm blasted. I'm solid. Although I have noticed on a few occasions how some of my foreign students are surprised by how drunk British people do. I am. I think you're going to say. <laughs> no, I guess. I don't get drunk that often. I'm a very well-behaved person. Me thinks you protest too much. <laughs> that might be true. Let's move on. Drunk, drinking, those are all good examples. So I got plastered last night and now I've got a giant hangover. That's not true, by the way. Oh. That could be one. And also you could say, let's go and get a bevy, couldn't you, in order to get a drink. This one's definitely related. It's another way. Anything to do with alcohol, there are like dozens of terms on there. Every step of the way, you go yes. to the pub, having too many drinks, having a hangover. And just deciding, yeah, to have a drink. What did you call it? A bevy? A bevy, from, yeah. Going, from going beverage. Bevy. Yeah, from beverage. That's the one. Or um, a sherbet. A sherbet. Yeah, I like that one too. That's a very uh, good one. Fancy a pint. You Sounds about old fashioned now, doesn't it? Because people don't drink so many pints. Is well, it fancy a pint? Fancy a pint? No, well, I think cheeky, that's still... A cheeky half. A cheeky half. That's what I was going to say, actually. Let's go for a cheeky one. That could pass as being just for a quick yeah. pint. I think you might say that if it's the afternoon <laughs> or maybe in your case, John, the morning <laughs> and you shouldn't really be drinking. You cast and... casting aspersions on <laughs> no. me. So I'm just teasing you. But then it might not be just having a drink. It may be a cheeky drink. I should get cheeky, cheeky half. But John, it's only 10 a.m. We should be drinking coffee. 10.30 is my earliest. <laughs> okay. I remember that. With my breakfast, with my cornflakes. Mm, yeah. yeah. And then you could say we could have a cheeky one and then get some nosh. Nosh. I'm not sure that's slang. Is it not? It comes from Yiddish, you know, the word nosh. Does it? Wow. I believe so. I promise you I'm not Googling now. <laughs> I promise you I'm not Googling nosh etymology at this very moment. But yes, I am right. <laughs> you need to. I that was unnecessary Googling. From Yiddish. From Yiddish. Okay. Yeah. Nosh. Standard but, British nosh would be fish and chips. No. Nosh is a snack, though. Is it? Yeah. Do you want to even get a nosh? That's how I understand it. I don't know. I would use it more general just for meaning food. Go and get some nosh. Not that I really use it as an expression, but as I've heard it being <clears throat> used, let's get some nosh. No. Hmm? It's more like between meals. Maybe someone else out there can check this up. I always think it was a bit of food between meals or just snacking food. Hmm. Fancy nosh. I've got some, I don't know, chocolate in my pocket. No, mm, not like no. that. For me, I would say, do you fancy some nosh? Meaning let's go and get some food. It may be a misunderstanding between us then. Okay. Well, that's an interesting one. Perhaps mm. you've just been living in Paris for too long. Perhaps I still insist it's not slang though. Okay. Maybe it's not slang then. Okay. We'll move on if it's not slang. Well, you can always edit this part out. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Everybody might love it. If you're listening to it now, then it hasn't been edited out. It's true. We've kept it okay. in. We'll move on to some money. We would say for British pounds, we would say quid, wouldn't we? Money. Yeah, where's my check, Sean? I'm still waiting. How long has it been? How long have I been doing these podcasts? I check Almost my letterbox every day. And <laughs> still, the check's not in the post because you promised. Just, I, just saying. I think the French Postal Service is just not very efficient. I mean, I'm okay. sorry. Must be Brexit. What was your question before I well, really interrupted? Well, it was talking about quid. We'd say quid instead of a pound, wouldn't we? So I'd say, can you lend me five quid? Nicker. Nicker. Yeah. Ten nicker. Yeah, you could say that, can you? Nicker. I guess that comes from Nick. Yeah, not, nothing to do with ladies' underwear. I think it's come to do with, like, nickel. Can you lend me 500 quid so that I can write a check? 500 quid is a monkey. Is it? Yeah. Is that slang, though? Well, I guess it is, isn't it? Cockney That's rhyming cockney. slang. That's cockney. I don't think it's rhyming slang, but it's cockney, a monkey. A monkey. Do we know why yeah. it's a monkey? I don't know. I'm not going to Google it. I've already Googled once doing a <laughs> podcast. All right. Pony is 25, is it? 25 pounds? And monkey is 500 pounds, I think. This is just in London, though, isn't it? Can you put a monkey on your Gregory Peck? What's a Gregory Peck? 
Oh, God. That's Cockney rhyming slang. I know it is. Probably. Monkey on your Gregory. Uh, Gregory Peck, check. Oh. I'm going to put a monkey on my Gregory Peck, and then I'm going to send it to this dodgy geezer in Paris. Yeah. I should say nobody writes checks anymore. Who writes checks? was the last time you wrote a check? Well, never. I mean, never. You've never written a check. I have, but never in recent history. So that's probably the wrong use of the English language. <laughs> but recent. <laughs> I haven't recently used it. Can I say something? This yeah. may be or sujet, John, but can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Do you check your letterbox? Why do you say that? You're making because... me suspicious now. <laughs> I don't mean for letter bombs and people, you know, with the mail you get. Sounds um, quite sinister. No, because I have stopped. I used to go every day down to checks if I had any letters. Mm. But a few months ago, I realized that I don't receive any more any letters. Everything just comes by email, including all my bills now. And nobody sends me nice prezzies or checks or postcards. So I check once did, a week. Did they used to? <laughs> Do they ever? From my beloved aunt in Australia. I know. Oh, should she not send them anymore? That's. I don't sound. have an aunt. I was trying to <laughs> think of. No, I, I never check the post. Actually, well, I do know. one just in case. I'll send you one. Yeah, yeah. do. No more postcards. Yeah, listeners out there, if you want to send me a postcard from wherever you are, feel yeah. free. I don't have my address, but just put <laughs> just Gideon <laughs> France just... and he'll get here. I'm sure it will. Paris, have to, Paris. Have to put Paris. That would probably help, wouldn't it? I'm not going to tell you my actual address. People might come around top and stoning my windows and things. Well, they might come and give you a big hug as well. You never know. Uh, they might have COVID though, or monkeypox. Don't want to risk it. <laughs> Good point. Especially English learners, they always have mm. things like that, don't they? <laughs> don't be careful. That's... Oh, I shouldn't say. Do that. I get cancelled? <laughs> John, do I get cancelled? <laughs> oh dear, yeah, yeah. Uh, John, John was joking that. there. I, was, I, was I, just, yeah. I love every... your, your Netflix special is going to be cancelled. I know. I love every English learner. Oh, yeah, even if they have COVID and monkeypox <laughs> at the Quiz. same time. That's <laughs> at the bad same luck. Time. It's very bad luck. That might be what happens to you when you next come to Britain. Uh, mm. No, I shouldn't tempt fate. So we had I mean, quid. We talked about M- Mula. Mula. That's a good one. Filthy Luca, that would be another one. Filthy Luca. And then you've got... But that that would not be in a good way. No, that's true. Oh, I want some Filthy Luca. No, you wouldn't say that. No. More criminally influenced. You want to know the reason for what he did? Yes, Luca, that's why. I would say, though, that Fiverr and Tenor would be more commonly used, wouldn't they? As general... A Fiverr, Lady Mm. Godiva, to say around my neck of the woods... Lady Godiva Fiverr, that's five pounds. Mm-hmm. And then a tenor, obviously that's 10 pounds. Yeah. And then I spoke about you being a dodgy geezer earlier. What does that mean? Geezer. Geezer is an interesting word, actually, because it has different meanings in British and American English. Do you know that, John? Yeah, I did. Doesn't geezer in American English mean an old man? Exactly. In British English, it's more of a slangy expression. It means a guy, a bloke. A dude, dude. and Americans might say dude. And dodgy means suspicious. So dodgy geezer would be a very suspicious man. Dodgy Questionable. Kind of. Questionable. You could also yeah. say sketchy, couldn't you? That's a bit more American, isn't it? Is it? He's a bit sketchy. Maybe. I don't know. I don't use that one, but it could be right. Yeah. You could use it in an area as well, couldn't you? You could say this is a dodgy area. Mm-hmm. Finchley, that's a dodgy area, isn't it? It's a very versatile word, dodgy. It has it so many different meanings. The brakes on my bicycle are a bit dodgy. Your Which... haircut's a bit dodgy. This geezer's a bit dodgy. The plumbing in this house is a bit dodgy. It's a dodgy investment. So it has so many different meanings. Really useful word. And it's widely used, isn't it? If your brakes are dodgy, it means they're not working very well, doesn't it? If you said the plumbing is dodgy, it means, again, it's not working very well. It's... Mm creating noises or a big leak or something like that did you get your leak fixed by the way my leak didn't you have one a long time oh no that was a long time ago wasn't it sorry that was i have had leaks yeah because i live in an old victorian apartment mansion. in paris mansion. Yeah, no small apartment in paris and the piping you want to be careful you're really narrowing oh, down where you live small apartment in paris small, Some, well, no i'm not somebody i find you i'm not I, 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 everyone lives in a small apartment in paris <laughs> Good it point. doesn't narrow it down at all 
Yeah. I was going to mention something famous nearby, but that would probably give it all away. Well, I don't think there's going to be that many people going around. I was only kidding. Monty is based in London and we offer individual lessons and conversation group classes in the centre by Tottenham Court Road. Come and join us. You can access the times and place to meet through Meetup at the following web address. So that's meetup.com forward slash Monty dash English dash conversation. See you there. I think you've lost the plot. Is that... Is that to lose the plot. Is that a good... It's an expression. Slang. It's an expression. Yeah. There is slang. So it's when you get really angry though, isn't it? Oh my God. Or often... Yeah, you stop behaving logically because you're so yes. angry. You yeah, stop yeah. having rational behavior. goes yeah. out the window. I think we should mention these ones actually because in English we say to take the piss and we say pissed. Well, so we did mention pissed earlier, which means to be drunk. But Americans yeah. would say I'm pissed to mean that they're angry. Oh, yeah, angry. Yeah, we'd say pissed off. Yes. Because I'm pissed would think you're drunk. Exactly. That's an important yeah, I'm pissed, difference. Pissed off. Yeah. I'm pissed yeah. off. And then if I say, are you taking the piss? It means that you're making fun of me, doesn't it? I think that's very British, isn't it? Even the concept of taking the piss. It's a yes. little bit of a sort of british thing. I know that from unfortunate experience. In France and other places, because in Britain, you poke fun of people. It can be quite tough, quite scathing, and you can get away with it because I'm just taking the piss. But other places, they don't like it so much. and You can be careful. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see from the, the scars on oh, my face, my black eye, my bloody why. nose. That's yeah. the real reason uh, why you don't, don't, don't take, to know where don't you take. live. <laughs> exactly. Always a good cuppa can help, though. Cuppa. Cup of tea, cup of Rosie Lee. Yeah, a cup of tea. Fancy a cup of just a cup of tea. Fancy a cup of That's always tea, isn't it? You don't say cup of meaning coffee, can you? That's correct. It's always a cup of tea, isn't it? Sometimes people say cup of cha, don't they? Cup of cha, yeah. Cup of cha, cup of tea, fancy a cup of. Always fancy tea, as you said. It's got to be fancy tea. Fancy a isn't cup it? Exactly. Don't know why it should be tea because, uh, because coffee can also come in cups. Or so the rumor goes. So the rumor goes. I guess it's just because it's a very English or British thing, isn't it, to have a, a cup of tea? There's lots of big, milky tea the English love so much. I can't stand it. Can, <laughs> That's, can I don't sound very British. No, not really. There's a historical reason why we put milk in it, though, isn't there? As far as I, I, know. I know that black tea takes milk. Okay, you can never put it in green tea or anything like that. But black yeah. milk, you put a bit of good quality fresh milk, it's acceptable but no it's just personal taste don't really want cow juice in my delicate asian infusion indeed it was a historical thing though wasn't it i think it wasn't it to add Why? calcium to your diet or am i making that up oh it could be I why couldn't was... you just drink milk well because that's you know <laughs> why do you need to put tea on your milk well i don't know there must be a reason for it why can't things happen without reasons good point Maybe there isn't a reason, but anyway, like invading your neighboring country, is there a reason or you just do these things? Just suddenly wake up in um, the morning. I thought, well, that's a good just, idea, isn't it? Because you've lost the plot. Maybe well, you should it? cut out that bit. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, you could include this with bonkers. Just Maybe you woke up one bonkers, day and you went dictators. bonkers. Bonkers dictators. There you go. Which means yeah. crazy, doesn't it? Or mad. Yeah. I think we should include that one. Okay. Uh, I think everybody will love that one. Are there any ones on this list that you particularly like or use? What list is that, John? <laughs> <laughs> oh, your list. Okay. Sorry. My list. You're supposed to be looking at the list. I know. Cock up. That's quite interesting. Cock up. It doesn't mean what people think it means. Well, I mean, it's not rude. It it's not rude. It's something it? very rude. It means a big mistake. A cock up is a big mistake, isn't it? I made a total cock up of it. Exactly. I guess you could say fuck up these days. Strangely, fuck up is rude, but cock up isn't rude. It's the polite version. It is, isn't uh, it? Yeah, it's a curious yeah. one. I'm trying to think of an example of a cock up. You met any of those with John recently? I'm sure you have. Letting the COVID virus escape from the laboratory in Wuhan. That was a bit of a cock up. It was a bit of a cock up. I shouldn't say I that's just, not I, the case. It was that, just an example of some that's possibly, allegedly. allegedly. Yeah. Isn't that Donald Trump's theory? I, know, I would never, I would never, I would, I, would, I would never echo anything that Donald Trump said. So I don't think so. I'm just, I, think I read just, it on the internet. So, you know, 
I think you've just made a cock up on the podcast by mentioning that. Okay. We'll say that. You got here, blimey, which I use a lot, actually. Blimey, to show is surprise. It, is that quite London, though? I do use that on occasions, but is it quite London? I think blimey? it is. I know Australians use it a lot. They do. As well they, as yeah. all the, the um, Londoners that went to live in Australia. Maybe that's why they use blimey. Blimey, mate. Which Australian comes from blind accent. me. Does it? Blind me. Yeah, core blimey comes from, because core, often people put core yeah. in front of it. Was Core was like God. It got changed to core. They didn't want to say the word God and blind me. It became blind me. So God blind me, core blind me. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. That's a good one. I like that. Blimey governor, core blimey governor. You'd say governor as well, wouldn't you? That's definitely a London expression. Governor, maybe, if you've been watching episodes of The Sweeney. <laughs> <laughs> the Sweeney uh, is a detective series, isn't it? From Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I guess he should. Yeah, should detective show from the 1980s, I think. Good way of learning London English, right? Yeah, I think you find episodes on YouTube, can't you, Sweeney? Probably, yeah. You can find everything on YouTube. So. I'm sure you can. He's lots of London slang. Governor. Governor. Oh, You're governor. nicked. What does that mean? It's interesting because nick has a few meanings, doesn't it? But nick it does. To nick as a verb means to steal. But if you say you're nicked would mean that the policeman is arresting the criminal. That's what the police will say to the criminal, that you have been arrested. You're nicked. And then you'll send them to the nick, which is a prison. Strange, isn't it? Same yeah. They're all connected. It is curious. So also, if you say I nicked something, that suggests it's quite low-level crime, doesn't it? I nicked these sweets from the shop. Something like that, yes. Although if, if your name is Nick, then you say you're nicked, Nick, for nicking the sweets, and now you're going to the Nick, Nick. I wonder how many times you would be able to use that sentence in real life. Probably not a lot. No. Not very mm. useful for English listeners, is it? Unless that, that... they're criminals called Nick, liable to get arrested. Good point. I'm sure there's plenty of criminals called Nick listening to my podcast at this very moment. There are lots of Nicks around the world, but short for Nicholas, isn't it? That's Nicola. Good. Nicola. Yeah, that's true. I think this is a great one. All the listeners should know that this more or less happens before every podcast episode to Gideon. Stop faffing around. Stop faffing around. It's true. I do faff around. I'm not very well prepared. I always forget things. John says, you ready for the podcast? We're going to start at 2.30. And then I sit down and then I see you, but I can't hear you. Then I realize I forgot on the headphones. And then you can't hear me. I haven't realized I haven't switched on the microphone. And then I realized that I want to get some water. Then I need my glasses. Then I want a cushion. And John shouts, stop faffing around and get ready. I say it every time, don't I? Yeah. And I say... To John, where's my monkey? You promised me a Gregory Peck. (laughs) If you want me to stop faffing around, send me the Gregory Peck. I just got to say that was a cock up. I'm sorry. Um, I feel gutted for you that it hasn't arrived. Nice. Yeah. That's very upset. I'm very disappointed Mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. But let's crack on. Mm. Let's Let's crack on with Mm -hmm. the podcast, which means Mm -hmm. to continue with something. Let's crack on. Stop. There must is there a complaining one? Oh, I can't find. Stop slagging me off mm-hmm. and being such a muppet. Yeah, I'll do that. To slag someone off means to say some bad things about them, doesn't it? Yeah, to chastise. Muppet is quite universal as well, isn't it? From Kermit the Frog, he's a muppet, isn't he? So yeah. Somebody who's ignorant and generally a bit clueless, apparently. I don't really understand that because the muppets were quite cool. Yeah, I don't know why we used that one. It's strange, yeah. isn't it? We did miss one out with actually the money thing to say I'm skint. Yeah, I got no money. Skint. Mm. But I'm broke. That's not really slang, is it? I'm broke. I'm broke is proper English, I guess, isn't it? You yeah. Say, I'm broke. I'm skint, which literally means you have very, very little money, doesn't it? Yeah. You're broke because I haven't sent the monkey via the Gregory Peck. Is that mm-hmm. right? We're not via. We're not check. via. Oh, what would I say? Just I can't even remember how to use matter. checks. Don't use checks anymore. Were there any others? I think I might go into the supermarket with my checkbook and see what they say. I'll just buy some milk. It's like in the Big Lebowski. That's how it begins, isn't it? He buys milk from the supermarket and pays oh, for really? it by check. 
<laughs> you can see I'm a, I'm a fan of the film. I've seen it many times, but yeah. Yeah, I think you've that's mentioned it before. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it begins, yeah. Let's go for some a bit more young people slang. We're assuming that a lot of the people on the show are kind of our age group and we're both late twenties. That's about right. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right, John. If we're talking about teenagers or people maybe in their earlier twenties, one of my colleagues in my tag rugby team used this expression with me on Saturday saying, you're a bit salty today. You're a bit salty. Is that like in a foul mood or something like that? Is it? You're a little bit angry, a little bit agitated, okay. a okay. little bit bitter I, in some okay. way. I think I'd recognize that. Not in my lexicon. That's quite a good one, isn't it? Or BFF? You must know that one. No. What? BFF? Buy 40 flip-flops. You're really showing how out of touch you are. You are my BFF. Best friend. Best friends forever. Best friends forever. Okay. You sure it's not buy 40 (laughs) flip-flops? I'm pretty sure. A lot of these are abbreviations, aren't they? Because it's like David Cameron wrote lol thinking it meant lots of love okay and it's laugh yeah. out loud it's going back a bit now it is going back laugh, a bit yeah laugh out loud that's LOL. what it means mm. i don't know do people use these as slang expressions i think that with texting as well because tbh you know what tbh means no i don't know oh god you're rubbish to be honest oh maybe i'm knowing the context I-M-H-O. But this isn't really slang. This is just texting language. Let's not maybe um, think about those. Oh, this is a good one. This is what I use with my French friend. Hangry. Oh, when you're angry and hungry at the same time. That's a thing. It yeah. is a thing. My French friend gets very hangry very quickly. And you have to give him snacks to calm him down. Some nosh. Some mean. nosh. Exactly. <laughs> okay. I think that's in the dictionary now. Is it? Hangry. Hangry. I like that yeah. one. That looks a bit sus. Suspicious, dodgy. There we go. Is that what it means? Yeah. To flex. No, I don't know. That's to show off. Okay. And you're pretty dope. Yeah, that one I only learned quite recently, actually, dope, because it's, it means changed a lot, isn't it? Dope used to mean like stupid, didn't it? You're a dope or something to do with drugs, but now it means the best, doesn't it? Yeah. If I say you're dope, to I would try this dope new game but it's interesting isn't it because if i said you're a dope that means that you're quite stupid whereas if i say you're dope as in using it as an adjective then it means that you're cool can you say that about a person that they're dope yeah you're dope okay and then if i say i smoke some dope then it means i had some (laughs) marijuana had a good evening john i had a good evening after i got wasted i smoked some dope Mm, yeah that's enough about my Friday evening. So. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? I mean, I think we might wrap up. We've covered a lot, haven't we? We have we covered, covered a lot. Some things to think about. I think there's another episode in this. I say this frequently, but I'm sure this time there's another episode in this. Hmm. Tell me, what are you about? What do you do? I don't know. What do you do? <laughs> I have a YouTube channel called Let Them Talk TV. You should definitely check it out. And even you, you, John, you've appeared in a few videos, in a few episodes quite recently. If you, if you want to see his lovely face, you can <laughs> come and watch some of the videos. They're the ones with the most hits, right? I think they do quite well because of you. This is true. Mm, yeah, definitely. One of my students did mention the videos the other day on Let Them Talk TV because they knew the Let Them Talk TV ones. And I said to them, did you see the best videos with me on them? And they're like, are you on some of the videos? And I was like, what? Can't believe it. <laughs> the one that she skipped, is it? Really? Yeah. I was gutted. I was so disappointed. Mm. We did yeah. a good one quite recently, the difference between the present perfect and the past simple. That did quite well. And I think it was really interesting. We told some stories and we looked at the grammar. Yeah. And there are a few more. When, uh, John, you're in it. We'll have to reunite to do another one soon. Definitely. I'm up for that. Also, your podcast has received a posthumous mention hasn't it (laughs) do have a podcast called zeitgeist banana i am taking a break i was just overworked and i will return to it soon depending on when you're listening to this he might have stopped taking his break at the moment he's taking a break yeah and you can listen to to the old episodes zeitgeist banana make quite a lot of episodes link in the description indeed (laughs) is it in the description your description okay yeah i'll put it in there I've never put it in before, so I'll put it in there. Are you going to mention where you got mentioned? Because I think that's good. Where did you get mentioned? Did I get mentioned? 
Oh, oh yes. There's an excellent YouTube channel called To The Point English With Ben. Excellent channel, YouTube. Check that out. Uh, he did what, something on the um, podcast and we, we got mentioned there. Yeah, so, you did. Okay. Top six or something. And somebody else chipped in and said that I should be on there. Yeah, definitely should be. Thank you for mentioning me. It's very nice. I think I'm better than yours. <laughs> okay. Have you done any slang episodes? Uh, no, I don't think I have. I just had them in London, Cockney, I think. They're going to take you to the neck. But that's not a police car, though, is it? It's an ambulance. Yeah, I think so. I think we'll wrap things up. Thank you for joining me, Gideon. Always a pleasure. My pleasure. And you've been listening to English with Monty. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave me a donation online via our website. Monty is a small independent company and I do all the editing myself. I would suggest £2.50 to buy me a coffee or £5 for a beer. MontyEnglish.co.uk Then just click on the podcast button at the top. You can donate here. Thank you. I appreciate it.